Hi everybody, this is Library 251, Web Usability in uh, Interface Design at San Jose State. Got an interesting, this is the third live session in the class, and we have a, a very interesting guest speaker as well. So today's agenda, we've already gone through our technical issues. Um, one of the students here is from Germany, and it's 3 a.m. So uh, thank you very much, Denise, for uh, coming to today's class. We also have Scott, who's helping out, uh, and Carrie Morgan, who's going to be talking later. I have about five or ten minutes of housekeeping, and then uh, we'll jump right into Carrie's talk on SEO, a search engine optimization. So where are we in the schedule? Um, and I'll talk a little bit about the homework and presentations, and then move on to Carrie. So you can see, here we are, um, near the end of the class. Um, you've done, you just turned in today your um, proper color, kind of proper. You've just turned in today your homework three on paper prototypes. You've turned in a PowerPoint presentation, and that's going to be uh, given uh, between April 26th and May 3rd. And you know that I sent out the Doodle. Uh, survey link, and everybody's filled that out. So now it's just a matter of pulling out mm, six or seven different times. We'll talk about that in a sec. Finally, uh, your final project um, is due on May the 10th, also at noon. So here we are uh, in the last Illuminate session on the 19th from 6 to 7.30. So seminar three started back in March, and it's wrapping up uh, May, May 10th. Uh, you had a couple of lectures on user experience and prototyping. You've done your, proto your paper prototypes now and created the PowerPoint presentations. And then you'll be doing the presentations uh, la later in the month. Whoa, excuse me. Time to close that door. Sorry. That was a Yorkshire Terrier who was very excited about family coming home. So um, one sec, folks. Just one sec. Okay, a whole bunch of love yous and I'm working. All right, so I have a Doodle presentation, the, the Doodle survey that you guys have completed, and you can see all of your names here. You can see the red portions are places where people weren't able to present, the green ones. So we definitely have some times um, that are going to be uh, a focus, and you can see this block of availability. Some other blocks of availability. I, I really appreciate people like Krista who filled in large amounts of, yes, I'm available, so that's great. So in the next couple of days, I'm going to have a forum in the class, and I'm going to give you six to eight different times, and you guys are going to put your names in those forums. So and in the two years I've been teaching this class, I've never had a situation where students didn't have a time that, that really worked for them. So I'm actually going to use this spreadsheet right here, this Doodle presentation, and every single person on this list is going to have at least one time available in that set that they've marked on this sheet right here is available. So um, it's worked for two years. Let's, let's, um, let's be flexible, and I think we, we can get everybody involved and in a proper speaking slot. Denise, do you have any questions so far? I'm kind of moving quickly. No, this is great information. Thank you. And again, I really, I really appreciate your coming all the way from Germany at 3 a.m. Thank you. So um, presentation tips. You're going to be presenting uh, after April 26th, and I'll have those times. Um, this is an excellent way for you to build evidence for your portfolio, and particularly uh, Competency M, which is demonstrating oral and communication skills. Um, I will take your PowerPoints, which you've turned into the form, and I'll convert them to slides. Things like transitions, animations, layers, all that doesn't render. You basically, you get a picture of each slide up here. So um, if you've built those things, you might go back and look at your slide, uh, your slides and, and uh, think about how you're going to be presenting that. Um, and if you have built a lot of transitions and you want to give me a new, a new set, that's fine too. I can work with that. Please come 10 minutes or so before the presentation and uh, do your audio check. It's under Tools, Audio, Audio Setup Wizard. And the session will start 
I'll do about 10 minutes of, of talking just like this where we can talk about the, the course logi logistics. And I'll go over a little bit more detail for the, for the final project and ask questions, answer questions if you have them. We'll be presenting in alphabetical order. So for instance, in this case, it would be Kemp, McCord, Morgret, Rinnegan. That's the order that we would present in tonight for about 10 minutes. Sometimes the, layout, the, the lineups change, so we may have technical issues and somebody wasn't able to present you know, previously and they come in. So, so please plan on talking no more than 10 minutes. And um, after that, I will give you in, in, in the, uh, a little reminder. So let me show you what the timer looks like if you're watching this later on. You can see it in the top of the screen, there's a little timer counting down from 10 minutes. So I will have one of those. It's not to make you nervous. or I actually like these because they give me a, um, uh, a sense of my pace and my timing. So, and then after 10 minutes, um, you really need to wrap it up. So um, the audience may chime in, like down here in the, in the, in the chat box down here, or they may uh, raise a hand. You know, if they're if they're bold, this actually rarely happens. <laughs> People rarely kind of interrupt the speakers, so don't worry so much about that. But I hope that each of you has a question or a comment ready um, uh, for after the presentation. And if you get disconnected, give me a call on my cell. If I get disconnected, which has happened a few times, give me a call so we can all. Um, you know, sometimes I'll I'll be disconnected, and five students will be in the in the presentation room. One of you give me a call. Um, and I can, uh, I can actually uh, keep listening on the phone, or we can just reschedule. Finally, I should have uh, comments and grades for you immediately. You get one grade for homework three, so you've turned in the, the slides, and then after the presentation, you'll get your grade. And really, it's about your ability to clearly describe the method that you used for your paper prototype testing for homework three. The final project. Um, really quickly here, I'm almost done, is a capstone. Basically, it's a mini version of everything you've done in the class. So in the first round, you evaluated interfaces. Then you, in the second round, designed uh, new pieces using patterns. And then in the third round, you took those designs and test them against real users using paper prototypes. This is the same process again, but with a brand new situation. So it's a way for you to synthesize what you've learned and, and packaged up package up everything that you've done it really is evidence for your for your e-portfolio. So people have done things like uh, the checkout uh, machines at Safeway or you know even um, text only uh, back end uh, back end systems for the IMLS, that sort of thing. So you need to choose a problem, define an audience, design a solution implement it and prototype. And this is really important in this five page report. You need to show your iterative nature of design, your iterative process you, that you went through. There's no finished point. You don't get to a point and say, OK, I'm done. That's it. No, this is really about doing it over and over and over again in an iterative process. So um, I wanted to get all that down on tape. That's about uh, 12 minutes, 10 minutes or so of, of my spiel. But I'm really excited now. Um, and I'll ask Denise again. Hello, Denise, if you're awake. Um, do you have any questions? No, I guess I, I do have one, though. I'm sorry. I've been thinking about the final project. And I think what I'd like to do is a website. It's a interactive page for an organization here that I use on base in Germany, and it's a terrible website. Would that be acceptable? Yes, that's absolutely fine. What you don't want to do is redo the whole website. So I want you to kind of really narrow down into a specific issue using the heuristics that we've talked about in, in the first seminar, and then a specific pattern out of Tidwell. And then take that heuristic, the problem that you found, the solution that you're able to, to create from the pattern, and really test it, test it, test it. Find real users. So don't, don't think about evaluating the entire website. Think about a specific problem and, and propose a concrete solution and then test it. What's the URL for that site, by the way? Um. I I don't know the URL offhand. It's a 
USO, the United States Organization, it's a USO site, and it's for Kaiser Slaughter Germany. And um, I think the challenge is going to be narrowing down because it is, it is really a, a lousy web page. So thank you. Yeah, I think that might be. Okay, great. So great. Uh, we'll take a look at that um, uh, in your five-page paper. By the way, the final projects are turned into a Dropbox. You're not going to be talking to each other about your work. You've done enough sharing back and forth. We don't need to do that. So just you're going to turn it into a Dropbox. So um, Denise, I can't wait to see how, what you're going to do, specific problems you're going to find on this USO website in Germany, and how you're going to solve those problems and test them with real users using paper prototypes. So great. That's a great question. Don't apologize. Thank you very much. And Carrie, um, I'm sorry I'm going so fast, but I, wanted, I really wanted to give Carrie as much time as I possibly could because what she's talking about is incredibly important and interesting. And you know, it, it took me a little bit of time to get my head around this, but we've been doing a lot of paper prototyping, pretending to be computers, working with people, and thinking about how websites serve people. But that's kind of just the surface. I mean, that's, that's one part of web usability and web design, isn't it? Because really what's interesting is how computers talk to each other. So how, how does a giant search engine bot go through the internet very, very quickly and gather as much information as it can about websites and then um, evaluate those websites on how interesting they might be to a given, to a given search query? How does that happen? Right? And, and Carrie's a, a world expert on this topic. She, uh, um, she and I, well, we didn't meet. She's one year, one or two years after me at, at Stanford, and she got the, uh, the and basically the instructional technology master's degree um, in the School of Education. But she works for SEO Moz, um, and you can see down here it's a software as a service company that create created a tool, originally did consulting, but moved out of that, and now offers a tool to people to do a search engine optimization um, using their tools. So Carrie's going to tell us about um, her job and search engine optimization in general, and also give us some fame and shame examples of websites that are really doing this poorly and websites that are doing this very interestingly. So um, Carrie's never worked with uh, Illuminate. so. Um, we're going to, uh, with Scott's help, we're going to make this happen. Thank you very much, Carrie. I very much appreciate your time. Thank you, Jeremy. I'm looking forward to it. Um, like Jeremy says, I'm Carrie Morgray. I also went to the same program as he did, though a different year, uh, 2002 at Stanford. One of the things that we looked about, and can everybody, all three of you, can you hear me OK? Is my volume OK? And I will remember to turn off the talk to ask. Sounds great. OK. And I'm um, not used to people using the smiley face for feedback. I will try to remember that. Um, I'm more used to keeping an eye on chat. And be sure to yell at me in chat if I need to slow down. So um, how to, OK. Um, OK, there's my presentation. Many people may not have heard much about SEO or you've got a bad impression thinking it's like snake oil and people, especially from overseas, trying to sell you rankings and guarantee placement. It's not like that. There's actually a lot good about it. Um, first, SEO is search engine optimization. It's part um, of internet marketing, the term is now coming towards inbound marketing. But that's for another class. Um, I'm going to start off with a really brief history on search engines. Back when I was at San Jose State, I was there um, in the mid-90s, back when Royce Hall just had a shared T1, and Google didn't even exist. And you would go to the different search engines, and you would get widely different results. And there was no taxonomy, and it was really frustrating as a user. If you searched for, say, George Washington, um, you'd get a page that was filled with the words George Washington, but it wasn't necessarily the best or an authority page. It was somebody who had keyword stuffed. Well, the 
US um, the White House.gov may have had a much more authoritative site with much more information, it wasn't coming up because they didn't keyword spam George Washington enough. Well, Google comes around in the late 90s, and they're originally called Backrub. And instead of looking at just what's on the page itself, they started looking at how pages on the web relate to each other and who rubs whose back. Who um, likes who? Who is citing who? They're looking at it like a citation on a thesis and realizing that, OK, if the White House has 3,000 different sites linking to that page about George Washington, and those other pages, even if they mention George Washington a lot more, if they only have a few links, well, the White House has a bunch of votes. and that's going to take into, um, be taken into consideration more than just the keywords on the page. So that was actually revolutionary. I remember being in the dorms at San Jose State and asking people if they had heard about Google, and it just knows what you want. These days, that's the way all of the major search engines do it. And by all, I mean two. There's Google and there's Bing. That Bing is now actually powering the results for Yahoo. Um, they look a little bit different on the front end. But um, they both have complex algorithms where they take hundreds of things into account in how to rank a page. They're updating all of the time. There was some 500 different updates in the past year for Google that actually were pushed out, and they tried tens of thousands of more. So that's why you do a search one week, and you do a search in the next, and you may find something totally different. How I got interested in search engine optimization was after I got out of the program at Stanford, uh, which did focus some on HCI and usability. There was a friend that was uh, doing some websites, and I noticed that the menus were all in JavaScript, and it just wasn't accessible at all. And I got to realizing that, hey, if stuff's accessible to people with um, disabilities with a screen reader, it's going to be more accessible to the search engines. And I just got involved more and more with the search engines. And these days, everybody's involved. The people who are online, 92% of them use search engines. And Google, on a slow day, gets a few billion queries a day. Um, people are coming to Google as the reference desk. And they're relying on Google to be the one to sort and give what's important. The main problem is that Google um, is blind. Um, there's actually a blog talking about Google and the bots called Blind Five-Year-Old, because that's how Google acts. Google's a little bit more than five years old these days but um, in what it can process, but in some respects, not too much. Um, can't read images very well. Can't read um, videos. It needs a lot of hand-holding. So, what you can do is you can help make sure that your site is viewable by Google, that, um, it, that you're not blind to Google. And in doing so, you can compete with the big guys. If you look here, VC funding, um, just as a regular search, has about 1.5 million results. Yet the third result here is Rand Fishkin's personal blog. And Rand is the CEO of SEO Moz, where I work. And he wrote a post about the $24 million we almost raised. Um, it was heartbreaking last summer with um, some VC funding that fell through. But he obviously knows SEO, and he has his site at the time of this screenshot ranking third. I do need to give a shout out to Rand that um, this presentation is actually, um, I borrowed it from him with his permission. Um, it's one that he gives. I have modified it somewhat for this. But on short notice, I wasn't able to pull together all of this stuff exactly. So I very much thank him for the original um, content here. Though he presented this last month so that I know this is um, fairly recent screenshots. 
and my page down key does not work to go to the next slide, which is why I keep doing a pause. Um, good SEO is easier than it looks. It doesn't have to be a bunch of magic. Um, you've got to start here on the pyramid. Um, start with the basics. Get in good content that's accessible. Get in um, URLs that you can look at them and you can understand. Make sure that um, your site is set up well um, technically. I'm not going to try to make the audience into SEO experts at all. My aim here is to talk to um, you 25 people as ones who may not be doing the development of the website, but would be involved with um, developers and helping collaborate on what makes a good website. I want to give you some information about how to make sure your site's visible in the search engines. The developers aren't always SEO savvy. You can have two sites that look identical but are totally different on the back end and what's visible in Google. So I'm trying to give you guys some um, information to know what to look out for when it comes time for um, a website redesign if it's for a large company or if you need to go out and set something up yourself, something to um, think about. You need um, some good keywords. You don't need to keyword stuff. Uh, you don't need um, George Washington on the page a bunch of times, but you need to make sure that it's at least on there. You need to give Google a clue as to what's up. You're also giving your users clues. So you need to start at the basics before you go on and worry about um, getting um, a Facebook page set up, a Google Plus page set up. Yes, they can help. You can, if you hit it lucky, you can go viral and get a lot of shares. But it's really going to hinder you if you don't have the basics set up. So just getting the basics set up, that can be an entire um, course. So I'm going to briefly touch on it. Um, WordPress is something if you need to set up, say, a portfolio website for this class, if you want to set up something, um, a blog. There are some websites that are quite large that are on WordPress. There's a lot good about it. It is one thing that will help you get a good site set up. Um, the individual per, uh, pictured here is Matt Cutts. He's the head of the spam team at Google. And he's one of those names you can definitely trust. If you do use WordPress, check out Yoast. He's pretty much the one to go to to get um, plugins to help make WordPress even more SEO friendly. And he has a lot of good resources. There's a lot of blog posts written out there that will help walk you through every single setting to make sure that you have stuff set up well. Some other friendly platforms, uh, Drupal and Joomla are both open source. I'm not sure about Squarespace. There are um, a lot of plugins there to help you make stuff SEO friendly. Later I will show you a site um, done on another platform that's less than SEO friendly that I have been pulling my hair out on. You want to avoid, if you can, putting something on Blogger or LiveJournal or WordPress.com. Um, these are all hosted by somebody else. You have less control over them. You really don't own your content, um, you lose out on a lot. The search engines want to show their users good content. They will help you if you verify that your site, um, that you own your site. If you go to Google Webmaster Central, um, I believe it's go yeah, google.com slash webmasters, and tell them, I own this site. They'll say, prove it and ask you to upload a meta tag. Um, to add a meta tag to your home page or upload a file that they tell you. So basically you're saying, yes, I own this site. Then they will give you a lot of information. They will tell you about links to your site. They'll tell you about errors that they're finding and crawling. They'll say, hey, you have a robots text file that tells us to not crawl this. Do you want to make, is that what you really want? Um, 
they'll give you some more information um, about your visitors. It's they'll, they'll also tell you some of the time if you have a penalty. So that's one of the first things we tell people if they come um, into one of the forums with questions is, have you verified in Google Webmaster Tools? Bing also has something similar. Um, considering they're now powering Yahoo, it is, they've got a much bigger market share. Do not ignore them. Um, they have some helpful tools as well to look at the structure of your website that will also point out problems. A plug for where I work, SEO Moz. It um, also has its own crawler, and we will crawl the web. We will, excuse me, we will crawl your website and tell you some of the errors that we found, and if they're an error, a warning, or just a notice of check and make sure this is what you really want. Um, we'll categorize the errors, and tell you how to fix them. Okay, going to give some examples of things that you may or may not have noticed in um, search. This is some of the weird stuff that Google is doing. They are changing stuff all of the time. It's no longer just you put in a query and you get back 10 blue links. You put in a query and you get universal search. You get back images. If you see here, it says everything. Uh, Rand has not selected images, yet he's getting images back. Um, you put in a query, Google can guess that it's of a local intent, and they will pull stuff from a variety of their internal databases. So you have things that are linking to a Google Places page. You have things that are lo linking to the actual website. Um, it gets very confusing. There are people who specialize expressly in local SEO. Um, very important for local businesses and stuff. Some people have more of a national, um, international, not location specific. But, um, and now Google is also, it can detect by IP where you are. And if you type in pizza, and don't type in anything else, it will show you pizza places near where you are. Uh, a quick note to Denise and anybody who is not in the US, um, Google tends to run th roll things out first towards the US um, and then later in other countries. Um, yes, Jeremy? This is a probably a good place to take a, a tad bit break and ask Denise if she does have any questions, or Scott, if you have any questions about uh, what Carrie's been uh, talking about. And I'm sorry, it's more gray. Sorry about that. Um, I, do, I do have a question just based on what you just said, Carrie. Uh, I have a deutsch.com um, IP. And what I've noticed is when I do a Google search, I type in um, my term in English, of course, and I get a lot of UK hits back first. Um, could that be because I have a, a, a German IP address? The IP factors into it. Um, are you going to google.com or .co.uk? Um, that can affect things. And have you tried setting your location um, in the left? Um, no, I, I use Google.com, and I haven't tried setting the location, so I'll have to look into that. Thank you. You're welcome. I see that um, Scott has said, um, even if you do not include Santa Monica, yes, if I was in Santa Monica and I just searched pubs or pizza, it would show me local intent. It knows that I likely am not searching on the history of pizza and need that. It knows likely that I'm hungry and I want <laughs> local pizzas to show up. Um, it also means that if you're talking with your mom or you're talking with uh, somebody on the other side of the country and you just say, well, type this into Google and look at the third result, those results are different. Um, it can be maddening sometimes. Um, my husband and I can sit in, next to each other with our laptops 
and we can come up with different results. Because if you're signed in, you have personalized search history. You still have IP search, search history. Um, there's all kinds of stuff that just makes it insane. Uh, thank you very much. That's um, what I was talking about there of where you can change your location um, that can help show stuff by um, other locations. Okay, any other questions? Okay. Um, Google is also using a lot more metadata, especially schema.org um, is the newest thing for metadata that people are using. Um, I have worked at an educational nonprofit in the past, and the metadata that we were using there in Dublin Core and stuff doesn't necessarily match up with the metadata that the search world uses. But look, Google can now guess, now knows the recipe length of time, and that's just something that is totally unreal to me. Um, have you ever seen pictures like this and wondered how they got in? Um, that is another schema thing. It's called rel author. That even if Rand posted on another website, that if he has metadata correct, it will show up. This is good um, on usability and click-through rates. That if you have a picture of a person there, um, it can help people clicking through more. Um, it's one of those things that's great to be able to show up. Um, I go through and I scan and it's really easy. I recognize Rand's picture and I know he's a good guy and I'm more likely to click through. Um, again, look, that this search for how to tie a bow tie is everything and you have images showing up, you have videos showing up. Um, Wistia is the place we use for hosting. Um, our videos, they have a good uh, thing on video optimization. We also have some posts about that. So if you want to know more about this stuff, um, SEO Moz has the beginner's guide to SEO. And it's good to help give you an overview with um, all about SEO and be able to talk a lot more intelligently. Uh, we're updating it as we speak. It should be out. It'll be out this year. I don't know exactly when, but that's the fun of SEO. It's it's always changing. The Google is changing things. We published an article one night at midnight about managing your community with Google Groups, and at six in that the next morning, they had changed the interface, and all of the screenshots were out of date. And it's fairly maddening sometimes. So it is fame and shame time. And if that really is going to end most of the presentation, if we have time left over, I have a few more slides, but I think I've been taking up a fair amount of time. So let me go to make sure I can share the desktop and um, show you guys some live things that I have set up on my screen here. By the way, uh, Carrie, if you need, I have about 30 slides from that slide share we talked about. So tell me if you want to dig into those, and I'll just throw them uh, right here into the slide deck. Um, I think I'm taking up more time, so let me just, um, I'll just wing it, and, or let, let's see, how much time do I have? When do I need to be quiet by? You know, uh, you're welcome to talk uh, until 7.30 if you'd like, but um, it's up to you. OK. Um, if you've already got those in the deck, I can go through those quick then. Uh, well, I can load them up right now. I have about three quarters of what you told me, the pages that you told me. Um, you know, uh, uh, maybe maybe now it'd be good to kind of get hands on, and then uh, uh, I can load the slides, um, and you could talk about them later. That works for me. OK. Um, here's the first site that somebody pointed out. Um, 
somebody else that I know in industry, and I otherwise I have no relation um, to this site. And it's interesting because that's on WordPress. And remember that I said that WordPress is is good for SEO. Well, in a lot of cases, in this site, visually looks nice. Uh, it's can be considered clean. There's not a lot of junk there, etc. But I looked at it and a few things. I looked at a couple things, and then I really just kind of winced. The first thing I'm going to do on my browser is hit Control A, and I'm going to highlight everything. And you can see by those blocks what is an image. And um, let's see. And unfortunately, there's more in here that's an image than needs to be. And Google, being the blind five-year-old, can't read the images. I'm using Firefox, and I'm going to go highlight. Uh, I'm going to right click on this hashtag of MCDM. And I'm going to view the image info. And I don't know if this is showing up on the share or not. But this is an, a 50K image. We've got five characters here, and it's a 50K PNG image, which is fairly huge. And it's not very accessible. Yes, they do have alt text on it. But it's really unnecessarily huge. Um, they could just find that font and go embed it. And they have the same issue in several other things here. University of Washington um, Master of Test Communication and Digital Media is also a 55K PNG image. Their alt text associated with it is Community Development Through Innovation, Entrepreneurship, and Story, which really doesn't tell what the text is about. It really should be, um, OK, I will, I will slow down. Uh, thank you. It, I uh, will bring um, this back up. So the alt text is saying um, not what it's about. So we've got something that's slowing down the page, um, is not easy for the search engine to know about, and it's not representative of what's there. I uh, like to use the Web Developer Toolbar extension for Firefox to be able to get a better look at what's on the page. I've already opened up a couple of tabs um, that look at this page, looking at the document size. Um, 866K uncompressed, which is quite large. And that doesn't even include some of the background images. They have a number of scripts here, uh, style sheets, um, a lot of stuff going on. This is also beyond my pay grade, because I know that this stuff isn't the greatest. I don't know necessarily how to fix it. But if I were to look, what I would search for is um, compressing and minimizing scripts with WordPress. Um, in general, with WordPress and the other themes, you want to use um, the minimum of what you need for plugins. It is fun to see how many different plugins are out there, what you can do that's cool, but it's going to slow down your website, and you can also have it, um, it can be a lot harder to maintain. Um, but the Web Developer Toolbar is a good way to see some of what's going behind the scenes um, and help examine things. Um, it has a number of options that I can use. I can, I will try to go slow. I can disable images. And I can look at just display the alt attributes or the image dimensions. Um, it's really helpful for troubleshooting things. And I can do this on any website. I don't need, um, OK. I'm looking at the chat now. Um, I will try to enlarge my screen. And actually, this is one thing where you can see, um, OK, I am hoping that's better. And um, Scott, is there a way that I can pin 
the um, illuminate thing so it's always on top so I don't it doesn't keep hiding um, focus. Um, not unless you know how to do that on your screen. I mean, it's not really like a collaborative issue. In this case, you're sharing your entire desktop. So we just see what uh, it is that you um, are able to do when you navigate between different uh, applications on your desktop. Um, you might just use a, uh, you know, I think actually on mine it's the command tab that's for me to tab between applications. Um, and I just use my hand that way really fast. I'm, um, that's my Mac. So if you, um, uh, you're, you've got Windows, and I'm not sure what it is that you use to command uh, the command tab between applications, but that's a quick way of doing it. Um, or you can just move your browser over a little bit. I uh, see so we have some screen area on the right, and um, uh, sort of uh, put up your uh, put up the uh, the left rendering collaborate interface next to it. Okay, um, I've moved it to the other screen too, so I can see it. I will um, come here. I'm resizing this now um, to put stuff onto one screen. Um, I have enlarged via um, the browser the um, website, so I hope that is a bit more visible here. Okay, good, good. I'm seeing. <laughs> Glad that it's helping. So, again, uh, Web Developer Toolbar is an add-on that you kind of inspect and see what's going on with the site. Um, up here at the very top of the browser, um, where my my mouse is, it says MCDM. That is their title tag. That is what they're using to advertise and say what their site is about. It's not very compelling. If you know what MCDM is, you're already in the program. Um, what they could really stand to do is change that title tag to Master of Communication in Digital Media. And then when people are searching that, it, it's one more thing that tells Google a bit about the site. It makes it more usable when you see that in search results, because right now, what shows up is MCDM. There, this is the title right here. Um, this is the meta description, so at least they have that. Um, meta description is also a good ad for the site in that it um, lets you see. Um, it, it's not used for rankings, but it helps people to figure out what that particular page is about. Um, so this is what some of the pages on their site looks like. Um, this is what MCDM is what's going to show up if you bookmark a particular page. So if I were them, um, I would go and move things over from images to text when appropriate for the um, things that can't be changed on over. Um, run it through. Um, an optimizer, if you've got the original Photoshop, great. Go resave as something web friendly. Get that file size down. Make it load faster. Um, people tend to think that we've got um, broadband connections. Everything's great. Well, we have people here from overseas. We have people on phones. I mean, anybody who has dealt with AT&T 3G knows that um, you need to worry about website loading time. <laughs> um, there are plugins like Smush It, which does um, lossless um, compression. And that is uh, actually a Yahoo thing. Um, let's hope it's not one of the things that they're discontinuing. It does have a WordPress plugin um, that can go and compress the file size of everything at once. So what you could end up with is a home page for this organization that looks to the user almost exactly the same. If I were to take a screenshot, you could hardly tell the difference. But on the back end, it would really make a world of difference for the search engines and for users. Um, I looked at the source code for this. And 
I didn't see uh, Google Analytics. There may be an Analytics JavaScript that I don't recognize, but that is another thing that just in general, it's not necessarily SEO, but it's just good practice that you want some type of analytics package on your site. You want to be able to see where the users are coming from, what website they came from, did they come directly, um, did they come from a search engine. Um, you can gather some of their intent. You can see how long they stayed on the site, what pages they visited, um, where they left. It can give you a lot when it comes to usability. You can look and see, hey, most everybody that this one page has a really high bounce rate. People just leave on this one page. They come and they, they leave again. Maybe that's something we need to look at. OK, so a different page, a different site also done in WordPress is Stripe Models. Now this is the business that my husband and I run. And we uh, sell model warships that shoot and sink each other. And we've done a few more things right. I also know some of the things that we need to work on. Um, but if you look up here at my title tag, it's Strike Models, um, RC Warship Combat, and 1 to 144 Scale Ship Models. That gives you a really good um, blurb of what stuff's about. Um, you can see. My stuff is in text. If I highlight here, you can see individual letters. Another thing I have that the previous site did not have is I have headings. Um, my H1 is an image that's not the best, but I have an H2. I have um, some structure to the site. I'm telling Google and I'm telling screen readers what's important rather than controlling all of this by just saying I want font size X, I'm saying I want an H1. I want to give some um, hints to Google and some hints to the search to the uh, screen readers what the priority um, what, what is important on this site. I have descriptive anchor text and by that I mean the anchor text is what I use to link. Um, delay in orders. Okay, you know that when you click this link, you're going to find that um, information about hey, why we're a little bit slower in getting orders out. That we're relocating up. That um, we're going to be joining SEO Moms in Seattle. Um, one of the problems that many websites have is that they use click here, and it really tells you nothing as um, a visitor about what it's going to be, what, what that link is about, and it tells the search engines nothing. Um, it tells the screen readers nothing. Um, if you want to have some fun, Google click here and see who comes up first. The first result is the download page for Acrobat Reader. There are so many people that say, don't have um, Adobe Acrobat? Click here to download Adobe Reader. And that has given Google the signal, that enough of a hint that, oh, click here must be about Acrobat Reader. Um, it's not the best. It is funny. It's um, a way to help convey the importance of anchor text. Um, another funny one is if you search click here to exit, it's Yahoo and Disney and Google that are the top rankings. Because for that, it is um, a lot of times adult sites um, or age-restricted sites, like um, if you try to visit a site about alcohol, that um, click here to enter if you are over 21. Otherwise, click here to exit. And the click here to exit will be linked to um, Disney. Um, that's just a fun example I like to use to show some of the importance. So um, I have also, if I scroll down, um, my images are a lot more optimized than we saw before. I'm bringing up just the image info within Firefox. And you can see that this is um, an 18K image and that I have good um, alt text. I have this is the assembled structure for the Bismarck. If I click on here, 
it links to a nice huge image that you can look and get all kinds of detail on. I actually uploaded two images. I, upload, I resized outside of the browser and uploaded one that was 600 pixels wide. And then I linked it to the larger image. So many times you'll see a small image that takes forever to download, and that's because it's been resized within the browser rather than um, natively. So um, some shame is another website that I am involved with that I am redoing. This is um, the website for our hobby done um, in .NET new connected forums. If you look up here at the URL, that URL really is not telling anybody anything. It doesn't give me an idea of what it's about. Um, URL structure, it, it's one of those hints to the search engines. It also helps in making your Google Analytics understandable. Um, it's one thing I am going to work on changing as I upgrade this. Um, and I also have a title tag here that just says forum, which is not very descriptive. And it actually brings up a lot of errors. Um, so one of the things I can, um, Jeremy, do we have the other um, slides up? Well, I can certainly put them here after uh, this slide. If you want to stop sharing, then I can load them up. OK, I think I'm ready to go through those. Um, I've tried to show some. Um, this also shows it a lot better. So I'm through here for right now. Just uh, momentarily took away Carrie's audio permission to so I could grab the mic because we don't have simultaneous mic time. But there it is. I was going to ask uh, what I asked in the chat. It's, uh, there is that uh, URL she was talking about. Gives us a, a better look at it. Just that I throw that in. Thanks. And that um, actually probably won't show up all that well for. Um, I'm not sure how it will show up because that's the one that says what's unread, so it may ask you to log in, but it still gives an example of a not very useful URL. Okay, oh, okay, there we go. Um, okay, um, Jeremy, what slide am I looking for to start with the um, to start with what you've added? Okay, so I'm just going to jump in here for a second. I'm guessing that Jeremy is loading slides right now, and that kind of ties up his uh, um, ties up the whole tool for him for a couple of seconds. While that's happening, he's not really able to use the mic very effectively, I don't think. So um, like it looks to me like he's getting them loaded now. Okay. Um, while we do this, do we have um, any more questions or things that can help answer? And that's maybe to you, Denise, because you're our um, participant. Um, Kara, this is a really informative discussion. I've been enjoying it. You mentioned something um, earlier that Yoohoo is now powered by Google. And um, I just found that interesting because my husband and I have just a little personal war between search engines. I prefer Google and he prefers Yahoo. So I'd love to go back and tell him, hey, you know, your Yahoo is now Google. Is, is that the case? No, it is Bing that is powering Yahoo. Uh, Bing is Microsoft's search engine. Um, years ago, Google was powered Yahoo, but right now, um, it is Bing and Microsoft that powers Yahoo. Darn, the war's still on.
Okay, so there's uh, starting at slide 32. Uh, I think I've got about 10 in there, and I'll keep loading. Some of them are a little bit too large, so uh, illuminate chokes on those. But you've got starting at slide 32. Thanks. We're going here off of um, a presentation from Design Hammer that I found that um, talked about SEO usability and accessibility. And it can show um, some of what I was talking about here. And it, again, it will be the stuff that looks the same to the user or really similar, but is different on the back end. And this is going to be showing good underlying structure. You've got your heading one, your heading two, good descriptive um, links. This is what it looks like on a screen reader, where you have your, your heading list, um, where you can skip around to what you want to see. Um, this is uh, things and accessibility simulator. Again, you can see stuff chunked up, and you have an idea about what's going on. Um, your heading list, your links list. You know what you're going to click on. You know that you're clicking on tips for writing alt text. Poor usability. This is looking about the same. Um, as I look at it, the one thing that's different is click here in the blue instead of something helpful. Yet on the back end, it's different. You've got um, just so. Sorry about that. Actually, uh, I know you're on the poor usability slide. I think, Denise, you can help me out here. I'm looking at good usability still. If you see good usability or poor usability, you can actually just click the text or put something in the chat for me. And she's doing that right now. And that's because the follow me option is not checked. OK, so um, do you see, uh, Carrie, underneath where it says recording? Uh, there's a follow. OK, that follow me thing is checked. So I think now you've got the uh, ability to go ahead and take us through the slides. Sorry about that. Oh, my bad. OK, I'll go through this quickly. So the good usability, you can see on the back end where it has the good headings. And this is what it looks like to the screen reader in Accessibility Simulator. You can see um, that there is structure to it, that it helps make sense. You've got a heading list that you can jump to. You can see the priority. You've got a good outline. You have links that you know what's going to happen when you click on them. Um, poor usability, this looks similar except for the click here, except on the back end you have um, hard-coded. You're saying it's a font size this with bold. You are using a different way to do the, um, the layout. And when you go to Accessibility Simulator, you see just one gigantic um, bunch of um, text. And you really don't know too much about it. And neither does the search engine. The search engine doesn't know what's important. There are no headings here. Your links are all click here. You don't know where you're going to go. Um, images, again, this is what we see. Um, those of you familiar with Twitter will get a good laugh. But if you're the robot, this is what you see. Or if you're on a screen reader. And the alt text can really help. Um, even if it's not as funny, it gives you an idea of what's going on. Um, Again, we're going in with audio and video that this is what the White House's um, address looks like um, without text. If you're hearing disabled or a robot, this is what you've got. You're given the search engines just a couple of lines of information. Yet if you add subtitles, you add a transcript, you're really helping out a lot. You're helping out those of us who are too busy who don't want to sit through an entire hour-long address, uh, or this one's 40 minutes. You're giving a lot of content to the search engines. You're giving a lot of content to somebody um, who can't see this. You know, this brings up a, a really important point uh, in my teaching. So I, uh, you know, the California State is very, very uh, strict and, and very uh, progressive, I guess when it comes to uh, accessibility. So any piece of multimedia that we put up has to be transcripted, actually. So any piece of video or sound that we offer in our teaching has to be transcripted by law. 
Um, uh, that's uh, rarely done, actually, but it but it is uh, it is a requirement for everybody in the California State University system. And people struggle against this. Faculty members say, "Well, how how on earth can I do that? I just wanted to record, you know, five minute little thing for my students, and I have to send it out for transcription. How does that work? We don't have the money for it." But this one point that you're making right now, that uh, search engine optimization, that people can find it on the web and that it can be used for people who don't even have time. So it's not even a matter of um, serving people who have disabilities. It's a matter of serving all learners. So this is a key point. I really wanted to highlight this, that adding transcripts and captions to video and multimedia is just crucial, especially in a teaching and learning in an information um, kind of setting that we're in. Yeah, and it's, um, I liken it to the curb cuts that, um, yeah, the curb cuts were in were made for people with wheelchairs so they didn't have to bump off the edge of the, the sidewalk. But suddenly you realize that it's useful for people pushing a stroller, for elderly people. The stuff that we're doing for accessibility, and that that's one thing at least that if you have problems pushing um, SEO through, if your developers are saying that it's it's hokey or that it's snake oil, you can say, hey, it's ma in, in some cases, if you're working at a public university, you can say it's mandated and you can get it in um, that way that you're, you're going to get love um, from the search engines for being accessible. Uh, so thanks for bringing that up as well. Um, I know we have um, at SEO Moz every Friday, we do a whiteboard Friday. And we have that transcribed as well. And I know from the user's comments, a lot of people really appreciate that. Um, and not just for because that they're um, blind, but um, because they can skim it, they can see what they're interested in. Uh, we have a lot of international users that English is not their first language. And that also really helps if they can follow along with the text. And um, it's just, it, it is really helpful on so many levels. So um, we're going through here. He, um, he's going to give a fame and shame, starting off with a shame example for um, Prada of what their um, website looks like. For a regular user, you've got all of these videos. OK, not everything showed up quite right here. But what he's going on is he's showing Prada and he's showing Levi, um, Levi Strauss jeans. And Prada really does not show up to the search engines um, in that example. They're not using alt text. They're using Flash. It's just you have an option to download two PDFs, whereas Levi's, they're using a lot more um, text. Yes, they have a big image, but they also have descriptive text. Um, it's going to get them farther in the search engines. It's going to get them farther with people with disabilities. If you'd like to start app sharing and go to that uh, slide share, sorry about that. I was not able to get all of them. But if you want to go to slide share uh, through app sharing, we could, we could certainly do that. OK, I'll finish up um, going through um, um, Prada. Let's, let me dig out my notes here, because I have written down which um, slides I want. OK, I want, um, OK, that's what the home page of Prada looks like to a search engine. Um, this is, for a sighted person, what their site looks like. Pretty nice, but if you're using um, a screen reader or if you're a search engine, you really don't have much information. You're seeing that there's not the um, meta descriptions, the title tags aren't unique. It's really not giving out very useful information. Um, let me see if I can expand this. Uh, can everybody see that? Um, the thing is, is I can't see. Um, sorry for the back and forth here, folks. But um, 
Okay. Now I can also see the. I am so sorry. Okay. I'm not going to be able to easily follow your comments, but at least you should be able to see this. Okay, this is what Google and screen readers see for their online store. Their secure checkout just says, get Adobe Flash. Levi's, on the other hand, this is their search engine result page. They have good title tags. You know what you're going to get um, in some respects when you go to their store. Um, their um, URLs aren't the best. You can see it at the landing page, but Levi's care it, you, it's a lot better than, than Prada was. Um, that's what their home page is. Um, visually, their products. This is what stuff looks like um, if you're viewing it as a search engine. And all that was done here is just from the search engine result page, they um, looked at the cached link. And you can see how a search engine views it. And you can see here, with the scroll bar, there's a lot on this page. And uh, we've actually got to go um, scroll down. You can see good description. You've got the style number, the price. You've got a good call to action, um, all of the sizes, a description. Well, oh, you're not going to see what it looks like, but you've got a good idea. Um, and that's, that's it from him. Um, so the last part of the presentation that I'll do is a quick plug for SEO Moz and what we do. We'll show you what uh, the campaign looks like really quick. Um, it hooks in with Google Analytics. I'm able to see my organic search visits, what's coming in, um, just a variety of, um, a variety of things. This is for the RC Naval Combat site, the one that the forum site that I said I know needs a lot of work. I've got really long title tags. A lot of stuff is duplicate. I've got the same stupid title for a number of different pages. And so here we're telling it's telling me why it's bad, um, how bad is it, how many pages. I have 50 different pages here, 50 different URLs with the same title. Um, these are things that I would work on if I had time. Um, definitely have some issues with this site. Um, this is one of the things that we do. It really helps you, instead of doing a lot of the manual issues, it crawls. It gives stuff that you may not have known about. Um, what I do is I help manage the community. I'm a community specialist. and um, I work in the Q&A forms. SEO Moz is both paid and free. You can um, participate in blog comments, and you can submit blo a blog post for review. Don't need to pay anything. We have a boatload of information available for free. The beginner's guide that I referenced is free. We have multiple blog posts a day that go up with really detailed information. What I do is help moderate the Q&A that's available for the paid members. What I showed you with the crawl and this pro Q&A that's available at the $99 a month level. Uh, we offer a one month free trial and I will have Jeremy um, email everybody in the class a two month free trial code that's not available for um, just everybody who's going to read this on YouTube. Um, one of the cool things that this um, gives you is that you can come in and you can ask questions. And it's better than a lot of forums because it does have that threshold of people are paying members. You don't have as many drive-bys. And I spend several hours a day in here looking and making sure that, um, hey, these are valid questions. They're getting valid answers. People are coming in. With, the quest, with their crawl report saying, how do I fix this? What's up? Or um, does anybody have any strategies for this? And we've got everybody from small business owners to um, big corporations to agencies who do search engine optimization for a variety of people. 
So this can be great to come on in and get some advice, get your questions answered. Um, you can get even Rand Fishkin answering questions that there are a couple dozen of us who are associates that um, are paid to come on in and answer these questions. You can ask a private question a month confidentially as well. And we're under NDAs and we can't share any of that. And you can get some great help. And um, But I would suggest to come and check out our blog. Um, you can see some of the stuff here that um, Dr. Pete did a great post on why does it look like big brands get all the breaks? And he goes in and he explains things. Um, our agenda for a conference just went up. If you're around the Seattle area in late July, we've got um, a great conference for you. Um, so that's, I think, um, about it for me. Uh, are there any other questions? Um, actually, I couldn't see the URL very well for the blog page, and I'm interested in, in checking that out. Could you put it to the chat? I have a question for you, Carrie. Uh, we just launched a new website um, for SLIS. It's a research-related site, so it's it's sort of a research portal for all of our faculty members. I'm wondering, um, in, in just five, five or ten minutes, if you could walk us through, you know, how would, how would I dissect this, um, this site from, a, from an SEO perspective? Do you, is, that, you think, is that doable? Sure. I see you gave me the URL. Um, I will bring that on up and then um, come back here and do the magic application sharing. And if you could put that little control on the right hand side in, of your screen and put the browser on the left and size it so it's in the window, that looked really good. OK. And I've also hit Control Plus to help um, make things a little bit larger to hopefully make it easier to, um, whoops, I just clicked on that again. Didn't mean to do that. Um, hope it make it easier to see. OK. Uh, as I look at this, I'm seeing um, School of Library and Information Science is in an image. Um, and I'm wanting to see if there's any good alt text on that. Uh, let's see what I can do here. Uh, display alt attributes. Um, probably want to do something about that. Um, Center Library and Information Science. That's, um, I mean, your primary thing there. You want to be able to tell people about that. Let me come turn off the, that. Let's look on outlining headings. OK, that's good. You're using an H1 there for your most important thing. That's the Center for Information and Research Innovation. You have smaller H2s down here. Um, so that's helpful. Turn off that outline. Um, I'm going to go look at the um, view image info and look at some of the images on the site. Just scroll through and see how big stuff is. We've got background info. Um, I don't see any, I'm not sure if you can put the alt tags on, st I, I would say try to put the alt tag on something uh, on this. It's, your images are nicely sized, um, they're not huge at all, um, you do have alt text on there. Um, So that was, um, I'm going to hit Control A and highlight stuff. I can see that most of it is in text, which is good. Um, let's go look at, oh, you know, something cool that you guys can do for um, 
usability is Crazy Egg and I think Clicktail are two different um, things that will tell you where people are clicking at on the web page, even if it's not a link. Because I went here and I'm looking at the different colors and I'm looking at the Siri news and events and I'm thinking, oh, if I click there, maybe I'm taken to a blog, but I'm not taking anywhere. Um, that's a cool tool that will um, show you where people are clicking. Are they clicking on an image that's not going anywhere? Um, do they think it's a link? Um, can really help you out. So, okay, I'm coming over here and um, Oh, okay. I'm looking at the URL. Um, I've got uh, this is great. Being able to see the Facebook page, the Twitter. Sometimes some of the most annoying stuff is when you click on Twitter and it um, you put it. It puts out a tweet. Hey, I'm looking at this page. When you really want to see um, <laughs> their Twitter account. Um, so I would say, you know, from an accessibility page, let, let's also look at the source on this sucker. Let's go back to the home page here and do a view source. Um, okay, it's I'm not seeing a ton of crap in here, which is <laughs> which is nice. I can actually read the text. Um, oh, you're using Git Clicky. Okay, I think no, that's a, a stats, but I don't think it has. Um, where you click. But uh, another thing that I do is I look at, I look for robots to see uh, if there's a robots directive in there that is saying uh, to not index the page. Um, somebody came into the Q&A and said, oh my god, I paid so much money to have my website redesigned and now traffic has dropped off to nothing. What happened? And it turned out that the developer did not turn off the uh, check mark in WordPress to have the blog or to have the site private, and that there was a no index, no follow in the code on each page. And I found that within five minutes, and by the next day, the guy was getting traffic again. Um, so um, I think click tails, C L I C K T A I L S. I think that one may. Um, be the other one um, that will let you see where anybody has clicked. It lets you see more of the path that they have been taking. Um, another thing I do here is I'm highlighting the URL and I'm going to Google and I'm doing a site colon and going to look for that particular subdirectory. Um, okay, it doesn't seem to have much indexed off of there, which isn't so good, but it could be the um, where is stuff going to? Oh, that goes to external. Okay. Oh, it doesn't go to Siri. Okay, that that makes sense. That that let um, that it looks like the home page is really the only thing you have that's slash Siri. Um, so I'll come back up here and I'll search just um, slisweb.sjsu. Edu, and that gives me some idea of what the search engine um, is saying. So there are so many more things that can go on. Um, this is just a really brief overview, but I hope it um, has helped both in looking at this particular page and in understanding the search engines a little bit in general. So if you wanted people who were interested in research and library and information science, uh, academic research, to find this page, what would you do differently? Um, keyword research isn't my particular strong point, um, but I would see I would try to figure out how. Do, what do people call this? Are they looking for library science? Um, what do people write into you about? Um, this is where you could go to the AdWords tool and see do people search library science or information science more. Um, one of the things that I found 
that our site sells model warships. And everybody that's involved in this hobby calls it model warship combat. However, most people call stuff battleships. They don't they think battleships and warships are one and the same, whereas a battleship is a type of warship. You've got battleship, you have cruiser, you have battle cruiser, destroyer, sub. I found that um, once I started putting the word battleship on the page, I really uh, did get some more visits. I You need to think like the searcher, and sometimes that's kind of hard to figure out. Um, some of the stuff you can do is to look in your analytics. Ah, and I see you have a Google custom search here for any site search that you have. Look to see what people are typing into the site search. What are they trying to find that they can't easily find that's good on for usability as well. You can find that you think something's easy to find, but people are calling it something different. Um, so those are a couple of tips. I, I'd go around, I'd serve um, your, your competitors. I'd look at other people in the field. What are they calling it? Look at those words and then get an idea through the keyword research tool. We also at SEO Moz have a keyword difficulty tool that can tell you how, how much competition is out there and, and how hard it might be able to rank for such a thing. OK. Well, gosh, this has been amazing. Thank you so much. It's a whole different side of usability that people don't really think of very much. It is um, sort of uh, very much on the marketing you know, promotional side, but it's really about market machines talking to machines. So you know, like you would mentioned, Carrie, earlier, um, this idea of SEO as like snake oil, but it, it's really about making the web more, more accessible uh, to machines and to people with disabilities as well. Yeah, and it is about marketing too, that um, we don't think of things in the same way that our, our customers do. And it's it really, that Rand has a whole bunch more slides on inbound marketing. Um, but yeah, it is, it is a fascinating field. Uh, once you get into it, you'll never just be able to do a regular search again. And that's really <laughs> kind of frustrating sometimes. I just want to be able to turn this off at times. But it really does help to kind of have an idea um, of what's going on. I can't remember if I mentioned it, but Google wants to make money. They're, they're nice. They're friendly. If you ever have a chance to go visit the headquarters, go for it, uh, or any of, any of the sites. Google is a fun place to visit. However, they have shareholders to answer to. Um, they make their money off of those ads. And if people aren't coming and clicking on those ads, they're not making money. They want to have people to have a good user experience. They want people to find good results. But they're in it for the money. And that's um, what drives things. It really helps explain stuff more when you get into the paid search side. Uh, one other somewhat off topic thing, if any of you are involved with 501c3s, Google has a grants um, program where they will give you $10,000 a month for free in AdWords spend. Um, if you're qualified 501c3, you're limited to bidding a dollar a click, so you're not going to be able to get up there and bid on um, cancer lawyer stuff, mesothelioma. Um, those can go for $80 a click. But that's also um, a cool thing that, that Google does that can help get visibility to you. Um, OK, I think that's enough rambling at the moment. Are there any other questions? Or Jeremy, do you have any other comments? I think that's good. Um, um, thank you very much. So that's, that's Carrie uh, Moore Gray speaking about search engine optimization. She showed us some fame and shame um, examples. And her email address, Carrie, K-E-R-I, at S-E-O-M-O-Z dot org. And also, uh, strike models. Right, dot com, very interesting um, hobby uh, business that she's running. Thank you very much, uh, strikemodels.com. Number three, I noticed in search results on Google, when you search for um, uh, warship models, I, I forgot what I searched for, but the, the search phrase that you gave earlier, your number three. 
All right, uh, Carrie, thank you very much. I'm going to uh, stop the recording now, and uh, if anybody has any questions about uh, the upcoming assignments or the final project or the presentations, uh, be sure to give me an email. You can call me. Uh, you can, we can also work in the forums as well. So, Carrie, thank you so much. I'm going to stop the recording, and we'll be done.